Hey guys. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys what I read this year because this was definitely one of my, it was my first huge reading month of reading. Even though it's not as much as everyone else has been reading, I still feel like this was a really good year and I fell in love with reading and everything I read, I think I had a good time reading. I've been loving reading like this. I've always loved reading books. I just never really read a ton. There's this one year I literally just fell in love with and I think I read like 40 to 50 books that month. That one has not been surpassed yet and I'm just really excited to show you guys how much I read this month, this year, sorry wrong thing. So I'm going to be showing you guys my tier ranking for 2023. My year in books, I read 29 books this year. I tried to get in my last one so it could be an equal even 30. Just didn't work out. And then I had 20,106 minutes read. That's a lot. My top genres was romance, which was 25, fantasy, 17, and then young adult, which is 17. My top author was Sarah J Moss, which is understandable because I almost read the entire Throne of Glass series. I only have the last three right now, which which is making me really sad. I don't want to finish it. That series will be definitely finished next year. And then um, my reading vibes was hopelessly romantic. And then some of my five stars was Fourth Wing, Silent Patient, and then Queen of Shadows. I think I'm going to go the order of what I read in that month. So we'll start with January. For my reading, um, for my top tiers, I did one, two, three, six, six tiers to go by. I only read 29 books, so they're not going to be as full packed. This is why I only had a couple tiers. So for the top tier, it would be could not shut up about it the second tier is going to be a top read loved it my third one is enjoyed the book fourth one was not the best but not the worst and then the fifth one is just not a fave and then the sixth one was just a no <laughs> could not do it dnf something like that so we're gonna start with the first book that i read which was throne of glass i read that in january this one was a reread i had read this i think in like 2021 or something and it wasn't my favorite of the series. I think that one's definitely my least favorite, honestly. I just didn't like how it was wrote. And I did hear somewhere that Sarah J Maas did write that when she was like 16 or something. So it's definitely understandable. And I did reread this. So I wanted to read because I totally forgot what would happen. Because I wanted to start with the series again. I just... It's, it would have been too much time. And I was like, what am I reading? What's happening? So I wanted to get like a refresh. So... I think for this one, I'm gonna say I enjoyed the book, but it's not like my favorite. The second book I read was Crown of Midnight, and that's the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I was really kicking it off with this, okay? I really, really wanted to read these. So for Crown of Midnight, I also gave it a three stars, but I think it was a little bit more than what it was for Throne of Glass. This one definitely was a lot better. There was more action happening and I liked the writing a little bit. It just sounded more mature and the events really started to kick up because the first book, we got a lot of world building, but we were still learning with the character. And I feel like with the second book, we started to fully get into it. So I think I think I might switch it. So I, I might put it with Crown of Min, I mean with Throne of Glass, because again, it wasn't my favorite, but it was good. So I think I'm gonna put that one there. I might change Throne of Glass because I really didn't like it as much. And so I feel like for Throne of Glass, I'm gonna say not the best, but not the worst because I seriously really just didn't like it as much. But Crown of Midnight was definitely like an up from it. I liked the characters. I liked seeing more of the characters and their relationships build. Third book I read was The Thursday Murder Club. And this, I had never read anything by him. This one I gave it three stars. I didn't really like it. So this one is a retirement home and you follow like these older people who solve this mystery. I feel like it just didn't give what I was hoping for. I thought it would be like a funny, cute, like following old people, like solving a murder. But I feel like the mystery that had happened, it didn't give me the satisfaction when it was solved. And I feel like it wasn't really a mystery. Like it wasn't something super and big and substantial um it was still cute it was really quick too i could read it i think i read it in a couple days actually i think it's just not a fave i just didn't enjoy it but it was good i feel like i would recommend it it would work for some people but for me it didn't work now the fourth book i read is air of fire and this is the third book of the throne of glass series this one i gave it four stars um this one was definitely better than the other two i feel like this one we finally got into the world we weren't kind of clueless the first two books i feel like were clueless we were still just learning there was a lot of secrets with the main character the third book really got into the main problem and brought the two first books together we started to focus on 
what was happening, what needed to be done. We met a lot of new characters that I really enjoyed and I'm really glad we got them. The ending was insane. With this book, we got a lot of POVs. There was a lot. There's a lot of people going on and I really didn't care about them. They were a lot about the new characters and I just simply did not care. I didn't want to hear from them. I wanted to hear from Selena. Fantasy was really good. It was still just really slow paced. The ending though, my heart hurt and it broke and I just needed the next book. So for this one, I think I'm gonna say enjoyed the book. The next book I read was As Good As Dead. Now, this is the third book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and simply, I don't know what to say. This book was really good for me. I loved this third book. It was really getting everything. Um, I loved the first two books and I was really excited about this one because this one focused on the main character kind of being possibly the victim of a case and I really liked where that was going. Halfway through, oh my god, I think it was at 3 a.m. I was still reading this and I was like, my heart was beating and I felt like I was in danger. It was so good. But the way that part ended, literally, my heart dropped and I did not like how I felt. Because the way that this book went towards the end, I absolutely hated it. I ended up DNFing it because I loved where the book was going and I feel like those last 150, 100 pages we did not need. I, I could not read the rest of it because I didn't like how our main character was turning out. I didn't like how she was turning against her morals. I hated it. I looked up spoilers on what happened at the end because I still wanted to know what was happening. Simply, I feel like if it had finished with the way that it had with that problem, it would have been such a good book. Wrapped it up right there because the way it was going, oh my god, I was loving it so much. But then after those events, I was like, what is happening? This is gross. I don't like it. I feel like we could have ended it in a good light. For me, I'm just gonna say, hold on, where is it? Excuse me. Oh, there it is. For this one, I think I'm just gonna say, just not a fave. It wasn't terrible. I liked the book. I liked where it was happening. That end part just destroyed it for me. I just, I was loving it and then that happens and I was just like, oh, like I was so angry because I was like, why are we doing this? Like, why can't we just, uh, what happened to the first, like the, what happened to the original plot? You know, like, <laughs> like that's what got me so mad because I love that series. The next book I read was The Cool Prince and this is the first book in the Folk of Air series. This book I gave a four stars. I liked it. Um, For me, it reminded me of the Spiderwick Chronicles, like that fairy tale type vibe. And I liked how there was like different creatures, different people and fae. And I loved it. I really liked how it was set up. There were times I was bored. I feel like towards the end, I didn't really get that surprise element of, oh, cool, you know? I feel like now rating it, I would give it like a three stars, like a 3.3 .3 or something. Cause the second book was definitely my favorite. I feel like with this entire series, I wasn't really invested, but I still liked it, but I still enjoyed it. So I, for me personally, am going to say enjoyed the book. Next book, Every Summer After five stars. I think I want to give this a six stars actually now thinking about it. Every time I go back to this book, I can't stop thinking about it. It was seriously one of my favorite books of, I think it was May I read it. It was after my car accident and I sat down and read this book. Every time I read it, I did not want to put it back down. It was just such a good romance to me. I know a lot of people hated the twist at the end. Um, for me, I hated it too. But with Carly Fortune, I feel like you've got to give it a chance that her romances aren't the rom-com, lovey-dovey. Hers are real, and I feel like they really deal with real relationships. I feel like with some people's relationships, that happens. And people decide to work through it and work on each other and love. And that's what I really liked about the, the book was it was like a real romance. Like it was a real relationship. And sometimes this happens. There's some romances and couples that have to go through this and some can choose to stay and work through it and some can decide not to and I feel like that's why my morals I would if that happened to me I don't know how I would be personally but this character and him decided to work through it but in all I loved how summery it felt I really want to reread it because uh the summer feels I got them at the lake them going through their relationship when they were children I loved everything about it because it just felt so summery. I felt at home. And the way they worked through it, it was heartbreaking, but it was so good. And I could not stop thinking about it. I could not shut up about it. So this one is going in, hold on, top tier. 
And this one is could not shut up about it. Loved it. I thought it was brilliant and I really, I think Carly Fortune became one of my favorite authors because of this book. So her third book is coming out on my birthday and I want it so bad. So excited. And this, this cover is literally one of my favorites too. So the next book is Practice Makes Perfect. This one I gave a three stars. So the reason is, is I read this, this was like my first, like my second Kindle book. I loved it. It was really cute. It was something short. I was reading it at a really difficult time. I had lost my dog at that time and I just needed something to make me feel happy. And this definitely gave it to me. I just didn't like, we'd finally gotten what we wanted, but then when they came together, it was super, super quick. And it was like, oh, the book's done. I was like, hmm. Um, I just feel like towards the end, it started to wrap up really quick. So I feel like I would say I enjoyed the book, but it was nothing substantial. So we're going to put it right, oh, oopsie daisy, right there and enjoy the book. I liked it. It was cute. Their romance, I feel like at first glances, they both had this attraction to them. I just wish I saw a little bit more of them come together. I could feel the chemistry, but I feel like... You were kind of pushing it. Next is People We Meet on Vacation. I really loved this book. It got me out of like my small little reading slump. Literally could not put it down. I loved all the events. I really like when romances go back in the past on their relationship and show what they went through. It really shows their chemistry and I felt it with them in my bones and I loved it. And I just, I like, I could not stop thinking about this book. It went through it so well. And I don't know, I just, I saw the connection. I loved it. I think I, I gave it like a 4.7. It was really close to a five stars, but yeah, I just, I loved it. I loved everything about it. So I'm definitely going to say, I, it wasn't a could not shut up about it, but it was definitely a top read and I really did love it. It was super cute and it got me out of my reading slump, which was another thing. I feel like any of those books I can get you out of reading slumps, top tier, you know? Okay. So, um, we're going to get into the next one. After people we met on vacation, I read One of Us is Lying. I was really intrigued with the story. It was really quick and it all went really quick, except I feel like it was a more of like a Pretty Little Liars instead of like a mystery that I was looking for. So it mostly went with a lot of drama, went off of like the kids' lives and what they had to go through after what happens in the classroom. So for me, it didn't work for me. I gave it a three stars. I feel like this one was more of just not a fave. Finally finished with the mystery and they'd finally figured out what had happened. I feel like I was shocked, but also I was like, this is, just didn't give me the satisfaction. So I think I'm going to put it under just not a fave. I just didn't really like how the story went. Other people have absolutely loved it and that's great for them. But this is kind of like a book where it's like if you're looking for a mystery, it's in there. But it's more about the drama that the kids go through. Not till the end you start to focus on what happens. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's going to be The Girl from the Sea. And this was a graphic novel. I really just picked this up because I thought it looked cute and I literally finished it in a night. Like it was really cute and it was something to get into. When I was younger, I had a hard time reading, going, getting through like the big words pretty much is what I'm trying to say. So for me, I didn't really like reading. So I turned to graphic novels because they were really quick for me, really easy for me to read it. So I was just not the greatest reader as a kid. So I loved reading graphic novels and I kind of wanted to pick one up. So I picked up The Girl from the Sea. And for this one, I think it just gave it like a three stars. Like I... I I thought it was cute as um, a graphic novel, but I don't personally like graphic novels anymore. Obviously, when I was younger, I feel like I would have really liked this book. It was super cute. It was really nice to look at. So I think I'm just going to say enjoyed the book. It was something to just read during the summertime. It had a mermaid. She was actually she wasn't a mermaid. She was like a seal, a sealie or something. Um, and I just thought it was cute. So I put it in the enjoyed the book. I'm not gonna like harsh on it and be like, this was awful, da 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 da. Definitely made for kids is what I'm trying to say. And it's obviously not a substantial book. I just wanted to read something quick and something cute like this. Okay, the next book. So I'm doing a video for this right now. So I'm not gonna talk much about the books because I wanna talk about it in that whole video series. I know I'm spoiling it, whatever, but just look out for that. So I'm making a big series of the Mortal Instruments series. And the first book that I did read was City of Bones. It was the first book in the Mortal Instruments series. And to me personally, I gave this 4.6. I really liked it. It gave me the factor that I, I used to read that. I mean, I used to watch the show when I was like younger. And I just never really thought of reading the books until now. 
and I thought the first book was kind of really nostalgic to me. It wasn't a five star, but it was really nostalgic and I loved the world. It made me remember like when I would sit down on Wednesdays and watch the CW show, even though it was absolutely terrible. Do not recommend the show to anyone. The books are so much better. But for this, I think I'm just gonna say I really enjoyed the book and it just gave me a lot of nostalgia. The second book I read in that month was City of Ashes. That's the second book. This one I gave a five stars or I want to give it a five stars. This one, I loved it. I think it's also with the nostalgia. It was a little slower than the first book, I feel. Or I feel like the first book went faster because of this, this, ugh, the nostalgia. But the second book had the nostalgic effect. I liked the vibes. I liked the story. And I loved the action at the end. The action was definitely one of my favorites. So I think I'm definitely going to say a top read. I really did love it. I'm definitely going to put it in with the top reads. I had read all of these three in a row. And like I said with Throne of Glass, I kind of got into a slump with this series because I wanted to read something different. I was in this world for a really long time. For me, I can't read a series all in one because I get tired and I want to get into another book. So this was the third book I read and then I gave it a break. But the third one is City of Glass. This one I did not like like at all i don't know what it was i just was it was really slow and this one just was not a favorite the third one just didn't give me anything like i just i didn't care when things happened when the events happened at the end so for this one i'm just gonna say it's just not a fave it just wasn't my favorite the next book i read was meet me at the lake by carly fortune i forget what i gave this for goodreads i think it gave it like a four star maybe a three this one i didn't like as much as the first book i didn't get as much chemistry between it i don't know i just didn't like something about it their story didn't have as much chemistry pretty much so i think i'm just gonna say not the best but not the worst because it was cute but it was also something like i just didn't like it so now after that i read assassin's blade this one i think i'm gonna give it like a 4.8 or something this book stabbed me in the heart ripped it out chucked it out put it in one of those like mummy jars and then left me left me left me in a tomb okay I cannot, I can't even think of that book without like thinking how distraught I was. That book was so good. I loved seeing Selena's background. I feel like if you read Assassin's Blade before Throne of Glass, you'll like her more of his character and you'll understand her background more because honestly, in the first book and the second book, I hated Selena. Like I did not like her. But once I read Assassin's Blade, I kind of felt bad that I had not liked her. For me, I really liked this book where is it okay for me i really liked this book so i think i'm gonna say a top read really did love it next book was queen of shadows this one was definitely like a five star i could not stop talking about it like it was so good i loved it because it was finally like all three of those yeah three of those first books finally came together into this and we were like okay it's go time we know all this loved every piece of it i was munching that shit down like oh it also tied in with Assassin's Blade. I loved the romance and the tension between some people. I love how characters came together finally and they were like, you're my best friend, like da 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 da. The romance, the fantasy, the fantasy, oh my god, oh my god, oh my lord. I was kicking my feet. I could not stop think thinking of it. If you want escapism, this book is it. It gave all the escapism I could have ever wanted and I loved every piece of it. I, I can't say any bad thing about it. I literally just deleted my entire tier ranking and I had to restart it again because I didn't realize I could uh, click on things. Anyways, where, where, where. for Queen of Shadows, I'm definitely gonna do it as a could not shut up about it. The next book I read was The Silent Patient. If you want a mystery, keep you engaged and when you find out the truth about it, you are shook to your core, read this book. That's literally all I can say about it. It was so good. Putting the pieces together, but you were just like, there's something missing. Something's not coming together because it just didn't make sense. And when the full truth was exposed, you were like, I, my parents had to ask me if I was okay. This is a could not shut up about it. Literally astronomical, the best mystery I've ever read in my entire life. Thriller, sorry, not mystery thriller. Loved it. The next book I read was Awkward in October. This one was not my favorite. I decided let's do like an October Halloween cutesy dootsy little romance. And that's the reason I read this. Was it the good book? 
no it was definitely there to get you in the halloween spirit and definitely gave that satisfaction of getting into some fall spirit i liked it I just didn't like the quirkiness of it and there was a lot of cringe and there was too many references of hamsters and it was just weird it was very awkward awkward in october makes sense now i won't pick a book that says awkward anymore i feel like if i'm being honest i feel like it would just be a n no yeah <laughs> i didn't like it i liked it because of like the cute halloween part of it and in my rating i wasn't harsh because like i was like this is really here to you know be cute lovey-dovey something halloweeny but i i finished it really quick don't get me wrong i finished it in like two days or something i finished it quick and it was cute i was just like no you know like i just just no just just didn't like it. The next book I read was The Seller, and um, this was by my first, this is my first book by Natasha Preston. Literally loved it. I was so scared. Like, I thought I was her. I was so entrapped and escaped into this book, but it was, like, in danger, and my body was going through it. Like, I got those, like, those jitteriness. Like, I was getting scared. I was very, very, very anxious, and I needed it to wrap up, and it wrapped up it's just not the way I wanted it to. She had a lot of trauma afterwards and that's totally understandable what she had to go through. But I feel like the ending was really quick and really just resolved very quickly. And then it was like, okay, the end. And I was kind of like, wait, wait, wait. You know, like I wanted actually more. I think I wanted like an extra 50 pages or like maybe even 100 just for to see her go through that trauma, her talk about it. Because the event happened, she was rescued and then it was like, okay, bye. And it was like, okay, she has all this trauma now. At the end, I was kind of just like, oh. I enjoyed the book. I feel like if I had another tier involved, it would be, be between a top read, loved it, and enjoyed the book. I feel like I would recommend it, is what I'm trying to say. The next book, Well Met. This is, again, another short, really quick, cute rom-com romance book. And it gave me the Renaissance feels. And I really liked seeing kind of the behind the scenes because the girl was in the um renaissance and i liked it it was really cute so i'm gonna say i like would recommend because like it was cute and i liked the romance what they had was really cute and i really like it it was really passionate but i wanted more of it because i feel like there was something missing from their chemistry something about them being together gave me some satisfaction and i liked them being together so i liked it and it was something cute and enjoyable the next book i read was a seven year split um all i can say about it was a five it was a five star i loved oh I loved again this is another book where it went into the past and talked about their chemistry and i feel like in every single romance book you should have that because if you just start in the events there especially if it's about like their past or something you definitely want to have it because i need to see that chemistry and with this book the chemistry and the romance and the cuteness of them being together was literally unmatchable i loved every second about it I think I was going between like a 4.5 and a 5 star, but in all, I need to say it's a 5 star. It was such a good book, and literally, I'm so excited for her next book to come out about this author going into like a romance world. I'm so excited. Like, I'm like twitching and everything. Like, I need that book. I need it so much. So, Seven Year Split literally made me love Ashley Poston, and I cannot wait to read it. I definitely was kicking about it, and it was such a good um it was just such a good book and i feel like it gave me this hominess of um i don't know just this hominess and i loved everything about it i loved the connection and their chemistry and how it all wrapped up together and the differences in the characters and the characters are so cute and the way i pictured them oh they were so cute um oh wait shit this is the book that could not shut up about it next book was the prison healer um, this one I did not like. I thought it was going to be a really good book and then I kept going into it and I kept going into it. I was like, okay, nothing's happening. Why am I here? Why am I still reading it? And I went on to Goodreads and I was like, okay, why is everyone literally rating this like a 4.5? I was like, I need to know the mystery behind this. And people, all people were saying were literally like the ending. I was like, oh, so I kept reading it. It was the most boring book of my entire life. If um, the last bit of that book did not happen, I would not be going into the next book. You know, I just, I just did not like the book in all. The last 100 whatever pages saved it. If anything, get through that book, read that last few pages, and you'll absolutely fall in love and you'll want to get into the second book. So I think I'm going to say not the best, but not the worst, but I still liked it. 
and it was still really good and I want to read the next book. Right after that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. That book was on my to be read for the longest time. It was definitely like the OG to book talk and I was really excited to read it because everyone was saying this was so good and the events that happened was really good. For some reason for me, I could not get into it. I just, I don't know what it was. I just did not like it. I liked the idea of her being in the past and like um, no one can remember her. Like that was really interesting to me. But for me, when we went into the past, like I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more historical events. I don't know. I just felt like something was missing. Um, the chemistry that they had together, I liked it, but I wanted more. And I feel like I didn't know who she wanted to be with. If it was either Luke or if it was with Henry. And it was like, oh yes, but no. But yes, but no. But yes, but no. And I was just like, what is happening? I was so excited for it to be done. So I'm gonna put it in just no. And I think everyone's gonna hate me for that. The next book I read was Love Theoretically. Sorry, that was in my 24 hour readathon, which thank you for all the love on that video. I love doing it. I can't wait to do another one. That, wait, Love Theoretically. Um. That one was definitely a top read. I loved it. It's not as much as I couldn't stop thinking about it, but I really loved it. I, what did I give it? Like a five stars? 4.8? Something like that? I don't even remember. Anyways, I just loved that book. It was so good and it was so super sweet. And I loved the chemistry, the enemies to lovers and his quirkiness and their sarcasticness together. And I could really, I could really relate with the main character because she was a people pleaser. And I feel like definitely I am still, even though I'm trying to get out of it and all, I could just really relate to her. It was, it wasn't an exactly could not stop, like could not shut up about it, but I still really liked the book and I'm really glad that I read it. And literally this book has made me love Ali Hazelwood. I want to read all of her books now. And then after Love Theoretically, I read The Wicked King. Um, this one is the second book in the Fair, the Folk of the Air series, sorry. This one was definitely my favorite of the trilogy, which is kind of weird. I think some people said this wasn't their favorite or something. For me, I really liked it. At the end, I was kind of like, what just happened? I was like, not really sure. Not really sure what happened. There was a lot of action happening. I was kind of like, <laughs> did I miss a chapter? I was like, what is happening? So for this one, I feel like I'm gonna put it in, let me say it in the would recommend pile. This book, <laughs> that, that's getting a lot. Anyways, so that was the next book I read. I really liked it. The next book I read was City of Fallen Angels. It was better than the third one, definitely. With this book, nothing literally happened. I feel like I was just, it was just dragging and I was like, okay, nothing's happening. Like, what am I waiting for? And then the stuff did happen at the end, but I was still kind of like, okay, this is kind of whatever, you know? So I feel like I'm going to say not the best, but not the worst because I still liked it. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to say not the best, but not the worst. But it also wasn't a favorite. I don't know. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, I don't know. I feel like it's in between. It's definitely not as bad as how I didn't like the third book, but it really nothing was happening. So I don't know. The next book I read was Fourth Wing. I have a video, that video is already pre-filmed. So that will be coming out during my little break, I think, um, six stars. <laughs> there was never a point in that book I was bored. The romance was excellent. The fantasy was astronomical. I want a dragon now. And yeah, I hate Violet's mom. That's all I'm gonna say. And now we are on the last book that I read in 2023. The last book I read was Queen of Nothing. This is the last book in the Folk of Air series. Um, I gave this like a three stars. Like it's just on a three stars. I feel like it was missing a lot. Let me get into this. So everyone says the third book is their favorite. There's so much that is happening to me. It was very quick place, a lot of stuff was happening, and I enjoyed all the events happening, but I feel like we were missing a lot. A lot of characters got, I feel like Jude didn't get her revenge or her consequences and punishments to people that had betrayed her. Everyone that had betrayed her, it was kind of like, okay, you're fine. Got a slap, put a bandaid on it, you're fine. And that was it. Like, nothing happened. She gave them, like, the cold shoulder, shoulder and that was it. Jude and Cardin. I know that people say, and it is also agreeable, that the romance is definitely the side plot. 
but I wanted to see the chemistry that everyone was saying. They are the true enemies to lovers, but I needed more chemistry on why they loved each other because I felt like there wasn't really anything there. And along with that, where was Cardin? The first book, he was in it a little bit, not as much. Second book, I feel like that was the most we saw him and it was a lot. And I was like, oh, finally, like the last bit of this book, I'm seeing a lot, we're seeing a lot of dialogue from him. The third book, it was like he was gone. I was like, where is he? Where is his dialogue? He's literally one of the main characters. I was like, we're missing a lot from him. And I wanted to see so much more of him because I loved his character. So I was just like, where did he go? What's happening? I need more. And he was just gone. And I was like kind of upset because I wanted to see him and we didn't get that. So that's one of the problems I had. And I feel like her books were too short. I feel like everything was a very quick pace and it was good read and it was easy to get through. But I feel like in all, all of her books needed to be longer. In this third book, I feel like definitely needed to be longer because we were missing a lot. I'll just say not the best, but not the worst. So let's go through my tier real quick. We'll start with the worst. So Just Know is Awkward in October by Teresa Yi. And then The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Yeah, okay, sorry, it just stopped real quick. And then the next uh, tier was Just Not a Fave. So that is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, As Good as Dead by Holly Jackson. And then City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. And then One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. The third tier is Not the Best but Not the Worst. This is gonna be Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni, City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare, and then finally, The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. The fourth tier is going to be Enjoyed the Book, Would Recommend. So I did Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas, Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams, The Girl from the Sea by um, Molly Knox Ostertag, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, The Cellar by uh, Natas Natasha Preston. Yeah, N Natasha Preston. Sorry, I'm looking at the, the little books and I'm like, <laughs> um, Well Met by Jen Juluka, and then The Wicked King by Holly Black. And then fifth tier, a top read, loved it. People We Met on Vacation by Emily Henry, City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare, The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas, and then Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. And then finally, the top OG one, my favorites of this year, um, could not shut up about it, is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune, Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, The Seven Year Split by Ashley Poston, and finally, the fourth, the fourth wing fourth wing by rebecca yaros and that is my 2023 reading experience the end of this video thank you guys so 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 much for watching it i really hope you guys enjoyed and enjoyed me reviewing all the books i read in 2023 thank you guys for everyone who has joined on to my booktube i can't wait to make more videos in 2024 i promise to be back very soon i'm already i'm already in a better mood than i was before um i also want to say thank you to everyone who commented something on my little community tab. Seriously, me posting that, I didn't think anyone was really gonna like it. I was just like, okay, whatever, just put it out there. Tell them what's happening. And I had a couple of you guys commenting and telling me like, you'll be here for me. And seriously, I really appreciate the few of you that did. Um, it seriously made my day being able to read that while I was at work or while I was laying down. It made my day, it made me feel better about what I was doing, and I really, really appreciate and love you guys very, very much. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, I just, I love you. Thank you very much for those comments. Seriously made my day and made me want to make this video. So, I can't wait to come back in 2024 with some amazing videos and to read more than this year. This was a really good reading year. I really loved all the books that I read, even though they were in a ranking. I'm just glad I got to experience those worlds and to escape to them. Um, I can't wait and comment down below maybe your favorites and then your least favorites that you've read this year. So I love you guys. I'll see you in 2024 or this might be in 2024. We'll see. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Love you.